All right, hello everyone and welcome to today's Gems of War video. This video I have for you, my strategy guide for Silverglade, which is one of the four Magic Squared Kingdoms in the game. If you've never heard the term Magic Squared Kingdoms, it's because it's a term that I use for the four kingdoms that use magic deeds and magic books in order to level up and give you magic skill point bonuses in return. The other three, in case you're wondering, are Blighted Lands, Darkstone, and Karakoth. Those should be the four magic kingdoms that you level up to 21st and then do the other two later. So anyway, let's go ahead and get going and talk about Silverglade. There are 40 troops currently available in Silverglade. That is one more than you require for getting Silverglade to power 30. So that doesn't give you a lot of leeway. So you can essentially only, only miss on one of these. You might miss on the Magician depending on how lucky or unlucky you are. The magician has to be obtained through the vaults by defeating Cedric. If you open up enough vaults, you should get this one eventually. But as far as the four mythics that you can get, uh, Queen Aurora is by far the best. And so I would highly recommend that you do not skip out on this troop, mostly because of third trait Rainbow Link, which gives you bonus mana from all gem matches. And that is very useful. That is basically plus one to every color in the game. And that is uh, extremely important in my opinion. Um, the other mythic to talk about is this one right here. This is the purple gem dragon that you have to hatch on your way to getting Diamantina. If you have Diamantina, congratulations, you already have this, this gem dragon and you're one step closer to maxing out Silverglade. If you passed on Diamantina in favor of Stellarix, then this might by default be the, be the uh, troop in Silverglade that you pass on. Uh, the other two I consider to be about equal in, in, uh, in value, but, and if you get all four of them, that's great. As for the weapons, there are two, uh, Forge scroll weapons to talk about. The first one is the Curse Breaker Wand. This is the best weapon in the Curse Breaker series, in my opinion. Uh, most importantly, you do not have to be in Silver Blade Week in order to craft this wand. You can do this at any time. Uh, the wand does scatter damage to all enemies, then blesses all purple allies, curses all purple enemies also has enchanting so it can get its mana back in time and of course just like the other curse breaker weapons it can cleanse all your allies if you have it maxed out if you're gonna mess with one of the curse breaker weapons it's going to be this one now unfortunately the doomed weapon is a different subject entirely this is the blue healer doomed weapon which uh, is kind of useless in my opinion. I did use it before when we had Guild Wars and it worked worked kind of nice in certain teams, but Guild Wars is no more. And even if it comes back, we've have better doomed weapons that have come out since then that make this completely useless. So if you haven't forged this weapon, you probably don't need it. Can be one of the four that you pass on because there's four more weapons in Silverglade than you need. The faction weapon is this one. It's called Life and Death. It steals life from the last two enemies, then death marks them, then blesses your hero. This is a really good weapon to get. It is not an essential uh, faction uh, weapon, but it is probably the next tier below essential in my opinion. So make sure the next time that Silver Necropolis comes around that you get this weapon. As for the class that's available in Silver Necropolis, this is one of the most important uh, classes in the game. It is certainly in that tier 
that is below elementalist class, which is probably a tier in and of its own. And most of the value you get is from the third trait, which is Mana Flare, which gains you two bonus purple mana when matching purple gems. And you can pair that with the Arcane Surge at class level 70, which gives you yet another bonus purple mana from purple gem matches. So just having this class at level 70 with the traits all unlocked and that talent, you get three purple mana every time you match purple in addition to that and the mana that you would have gotten. Finally, we have the pets. Keep in mind that you need four of these pets maxed out and a fifth one at any level. Of course, you'll want to get the tiny corns. The tiny corns are the uh, kingdom boost pets. Those are the most important ones, no matter what kingdom we're talking about. The bony corn is the is the pet that you get from maxing out silver necropolis. And as far as the remaining pets, you just need to get one of them at max. And probably the best value is going to be Leafette. Leafette gives you a team bonus for elves. Uh, if you wanted to, you could go for Arcanus Hound, which gives Arcanus a certain number of points to all of his skills, up to five. Of course, this is completely useless if you do not use Arcanus. And all of the rest of the pets that you see here are cosmetic, which means if you got them, great enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like, subscribe to this channel and or follow me on Twitch if you'd like to see more of my content. And in the comments below, let me know what you think of Silverglade and maybe what you think of my new format for these videos. And with that, I'll see you in the next video.